Hi guys, welcome to today's class. So here we will be discussing the number of independent elastic constants. So as we all know, the material can be anisotropy or isotropic in nature. And as we go from anisotropic to isotropic, the number of independent elastic constants will vary. So let's start our class. So here we can see that generally an isotropic material has got 81 elastic constants. Why there is 81 elastic constants? These 81 independent elastic constants are because we require 9 by 9 metrics in order to define the material's elastic nature property. So here we can see E1111. That means which corresponds to the sigma 11 as well as epsilon 11. So here sigma 11 equal to this particular quantity into epsilon 11 plus this particular quantity into epsilon 22 and that is the general Hooke's law. So as we all know, general Hooke's law relates stress and the strain components. So here we have got nine stress components. Here we got nine strain components. So we require the elasticity matrix to be nine by nine, thereby nine into nine, which is equal to 81 elastic constants. Uh, and if we consider stress symmetricity the number of independent elastic constant reduces to 54 from 81 and further if we incorporate strain symmetry it reduces further from 54 to 36 and we know what is this 36 36 is actually uh, the number of elements in a 6 by 6 matrix the 9 by 9 matrix reduces to 6 by 6 matrix by the introduction of strain and stress symmetry symmetry and if we are considering any linear elastic material then this particular number number of independent elastic constant reduces from 36 to 21 here we can see just consider uh, let it be uh, like uh, just consider the upper triangle triangular elements okay so if the 6 by 6 matrix is symmetric then we have got 6 into 7 that is divided by 2 that is the number of independent elements which is equal to 3 into 7 that is 21 so 21 will be the reduced number of independent constants for any linear elastic and if we consider monoclinic material then this number 21 reduces to 13 because we are introducing a single plane of symmetry and further if we introduce two planes of symmetry then this number 21 reduces to 9 that's why these elements are 0 this these elements are 0 but just consider if it was not an orthotropic material these particular elements won't be zero okay and we will have some uh, particular values over here so for a hyper elastic or a linearly elastic material we will have these as non-zero and there will be a symmetry symmetricity and this is a symmetric matrix for a hyper elastic material that's why we have 21 independent elastic constant and 9 for orthotropic material because it has got two planes of symmetry so just consider uh, transversely isotropic where um, we have got only five independent elastic constant in transversely isotropic materials we have got a specialty so in transversely isotropic the physical properties are symmetric about an axis perpendicular to the plane of symmetry here in this particular example the plane of symmetry is considered to be xy so we consider ep that is ep is equal to ex equal to ey and z is the direction axis perpendicular to the xy so uh, which are the five independent elastic constants one is gzp ep 
PZ and nu PZ. So they are the five independent elastic constant. Why nu ZP? Why not nu ZP? Nu ZP can be obtained from the relation nu PZ divided by EZ is equal to nu ZP divided by EP. Okay. So that's actually uh, asymmetricity. Okay. We are just uh, equating the uh, symmetric elements and we are getting the relation. So uh, I will just repeat once again the independent constants of GZP, EP, EZ, nu ZP, nu PZ. Sorry, nu ZP and nu P. Okay. I'll just repeat once again so that it is clear. GZP, EP, EZ, nu PZ and nu P. Okay. So it's clear that five independent elastic constants. But as for isotropic materials, as we all know, there are only two independent elastic constants. They are Young's modulus and the Poisson's ratio. And we have got the elasticity matrix over here. So thank you.